We, as correspondents, weren't heroes. We were there looking for heroes. Before the war come to Saipan, like uh, we are living in paradise. They build you up from scratch, and after it was all done, boot camp, you knew why. They made men out of you, they made Marines out of you, and then you were proud enough, and then you would do most anything for the Marine Corps and what you were told. There's a great deal of, uh, of uh, fear and, you know, a tight knot in your stomach. These Japanese tell us, we got a meeting, a special meeting, so we had a meeting. So they tell us, okay, tomorrow, we're not going to work no more in the rice field. We're going to work on the air base. They came words that the Japanese uh, got the island. We are victimized by the Japanese. They like to come during meal time and then just push all of us away from the table and they'll sit and eat and then take whatever else they could find. All I feel is somebody pushed my head down and hit me. When he hit me, I feel like somebody threw a bucket of of water at me, and I was just passed out. The next thing I know is I'm struggling for air. I was really hurt, struggling to breathe, and I cannot breathe, but this hand, didn't, they didn't bury this hand, this finger. So I, I, st I still, you know, I still struggling, so I start scratching this area here. When you leave uh, San Diego, you're, you're already in combat, a combat area yeah. because that's a hostile water, hostile area. Well, we're getting close to the island, and, and our radar man in the back, he, when he got excited, he'd stutter a little bit. He said, I think I got a whole, 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 whole bunch of them coming. And I looked up, and there's a Japanese Nelly flying along watching with us. Didn't know we were there, obviously. And um, Sleepy pulled a our B-24 up to where I couldn't miss. And uh, I saw, it was so close that I could uh, see my bullets hitting his engine. Yeah. Things are happening so fast, really. You, you, uh, you just kind of stayed in your own zone, your own sphere, and you didn't worry about the rest of it. Well, one of the officers that was wounded before I got there uh, had a, a, a ja Japanese officer, officer jump in the hole with a, a shell hole with, with his sword. He swung at him. And this lieutenant grabbed the sword, tore it out, cut the Jap's head off, and in doing so, cut two, two of his fingers off. When we got back out, we hauled wounded back to whatever ship would take them, and uh, then we'd haul some more material back into the beach. Well, we depended mostly on the, on the darn telephone. You know. But they would sneak in behind and cut the, <laughs> cut the line. Right. And then you go out to fix them, they're waiting for you. You had one mission, was to do your job and let nothing stand between you and that. So I had a little Hermes typewriter and I put it on my, put it on my knees. And with the guys firing around me, I wanted to write my story and I started to write it. Because it's the young generation that needs this to know what we went through. This is everybody, Army, Navy, Air Force, whoever. Yeah. And All Marines, in it together. Code talkers, we're together. You can't carry hate with you without hurting yourself. I've been told this that the people who strive most for peace are the military. That that seems paradoxical, but it is so. Uh, the, the people who know war are the ones who don't want it. <laughs>